Hi everyone, this is Space Toad and welcome to this new weekly update of Bitcraft 6.1. Uh, well, not quite so weekly at this uh, point, I must say. Uh, you may have noticed that I missed two weeks in the weekly update. I'm likely to miss uh, additional weeks uh, because of vacation time. Some of you may know that I'm French and some of you may know that French people uh, probably have the largest amount of vacation of the world or, or maybe second largest, maybe Sweden has more vacation, I don't know. But anyway, um, during this vacation time I didn't have full access of the computer and had other things to do obviously, but I managed to make some progress and I wanted to show to you uh, this progress tonight. Anyway, uh, enough about my life, let's get to the meat and let's get started. The first thing I want to talk about is a builder robot. Now, this is Buildcraft, so obviously uh, at some point we're going to need robots that do building. Uh, to demonstrate this robot, I'm going to need a blueprint and to make sure that uh, I don't encounter any early bug, I'm going to um, build a very simple structure here, just plain blocks, although it's supposed to be working on things more complex. Uh, so selecting the blueprints here and what I'm going to do this time is I, I could use a, a builder to build that blueprint but I want to use robots. There is a new robot uh, which is conveniently called the builder and this robot will need to access to special landmarks. Um, this is one, okay. Uh, those don't really have a name, I guess uh, they're going to be called construction markers maybe. And the idea is that on a construction marker I can place a blueprint like this. Okay. So this says to any robots, any builder robot in the area, here I've got this thing to construct. So I'm going to take one of the uh, builder robots here and if I place it, it's going to look for a chest that contains elements useful for uh, building the, the structure. And as you can see here, it's just getting uh, pieces of stone from this chest. And this chest does have stone. And it's going to build uh, the structure very slowly. If I want to accelerate, I can add additional robots. So here I'm going to add two more and maybe needing a few um, stations as well. And you can see that now I've got a bunch of robots trying to build a structure which is going to accelerate uh, the whole process. Now if you compare this to a regular builder, this is going to be slower. That's, uh, that's actually the idea. It is a lot more flexible than the, uh, the regular builder because the robots they are going to be able to look on various um, chests connected to uh, robot stations and fetch objects from there but it's going to be uh, taking a lot more time. Now eventually those robots they will be able to complete and to help uh, a regular builder block but um, we are not there yet. Anyway, this was the first features implemented, the first enhancement, the builder robot. Let's carry on. Some of you may have noticed this weird map um, captures that were posted on Twitter and Facebook. Let's have a look at the actual block uh, in question, which is this block, which doesn't quite have a name yet and it's more like an experimental blog than actually a final features but uh, nonetheless let's open it up and here we are um, this block contains a map of the surroundings you can see that there is the structure that uh, was initially built to be reproduced uh, we can see the structure that has just been built by the robots because it was built after the map was computed but um, those are details to be uh, fixed probably at a later stage you can see here the village which is here so so far so good nothing 
particularly exciting. One element of this map that may start to be more interesting is the fact that you can navigate in the map. So if I hit right click, I can um, start to look around. The area that is covered, if I remember correctly, is something like 2 kilometers by 2 kilometers, so 2000 blocks by 2000 blocks or something like that. Uh, I can zoom out, I can zoom in, so, so you can see that I can cover a pretty large area of land. I can even uh, move full screen if I want uh, to have a, um, a better overview of the land that is covered by this block. Uh, getting back to a regular screen one. Anyway, so the purpose of this map is going to be to define areas. Uh, in the previous videos you may recall the fact that it's possible to capture an area defined by landmarks and then provide it as an input for the robot so that the robot only works in this area. Now with this new block it's going to be possible to define an area just looking at the map using the brushes uh, here in the bottom left. So I have 12 brushes which means that I can store up to 12 different areas. Uh, for example, let's take the, the red one and I'm going to select here uh, a forest. Okay, and this is a, a small forest but I can uh, zoom out a bit and take the purple one and select here a, a larger forest. And I can add area if I go back here. Let's select the... Uh, where's my mouse? Here it is. Orange one. I'm going to select um, some space here, then some space there, etc, etc. So you can really add add things up. If I go here, I can erase uh, a little bit um, of area that I actually don't want to get selected. Um, so now, when these areas are selected, I can record them using the map location here and placing the map location in this slot there which is going to have for effect to write the selected area into the item. Now this is just the beginning of the exploitation of this feature. There is a lot more to come but I just wanted to introduce this to you at this stage uh, to give you a little feel of what Beecraft Endgame is going to be. You might recall the so-called urbanist block that was presented, I guess, in February or something. Uh, this may very well replace uh, the urbanist. The reason is that uh, this allowed to define orders on a much, much larger uh, area on the map. Anyway, uh, we have our map location and obviously, as you may already expect, this is going to allow us to define and to order robots to work into the area that I've given. And actually, uh, I'd rather define something smaller to make sure that I understand what's happening. So um, here I'm, I'm providing a, a small area at the bottom of the village. Okay, I is going to make things a bit more obvious. So now I can see that those robots they finish the work. They, they build this structure and now they kind of are waiting for more orders which I'm not going to provide so guys you can just uh, stand here for a little while and instead I'm going to work on this gate here and I shouldn't have done that because I overwritten the contents of uh, this object I might change the interface at some point anyway let me find what did I have yes this one Okay, so changing the content on this uh, map location to get back the area I selected. Here we are. And now I'm going to try to avoid messing up with it. I'm making this mistake all the time. I think I'm going to change the sensibility of the interface. Anyway, now we're good. So I'm saying here that, uh, let's say when there's no redstone signal provided, the robot is going to work in an area that is defined by this map. Okay, so in this chest I have 
this happens. So if I place um, plantar robots here, they are going to get the saplings and they should uh, plant them next to the village as I just ordered. And you can see that indeed they are going over this area over there that I selected before. So again, this is just a, a, a snapshot. This is just a very early idea of how orders are going to be given to robots uh, when reaching the end game of Buildcraft. And hopefully they are going to plant those things, yes. So they're indeed planting them uh, where I was hoping them to. Anyway, the very last thing I wanted to talk about is uh, a new gameplay feature I've been starting to work on. And on this one, I, I do need a lot of feedback to understand if I'm going towards the good direction or not. Uh, I know that there is an Among Us amount of blocks in Buildcraft, a mechanism, and it starts to be difficult to uh, know them all or understand them all. So the idea was to introduce an actual tech tree to Buildcraft so that uh, you will have an overview of everything you can do, but you would uh, be driven somehow from the beginning through the end. So the tech tree or the research tree is now represented or implemented rather in this object which is called the engineering science book and the idea is that you will not be able to build a given block or a given item before it's been researched in the engineering science book so let's see how that works um, here I've, I've, I've got one from the, the creative um, the creative menu and I'm going to open it and as you can see this looks like a bit like the creative interface but it's not uh, you have here 14 tabs which are the 14 tiers of technology available in Buildcraft not everything is in yet uh, I will make a much more comprehensive video once this is more advanced but the idea is that you've got um, wooden gear tier which is tier 1 then you move on to the stone gear tier 2 and etc etc and then eventually you go to uh, much more advanced tech gears tech tiers uh, which are far from being complete here and you can see that there are four here that uh, are represented by a bedrock but uh, I have two additional gears waiting here and I guess two additional chipsets waiting here anyway um, here you can see that there are some items that have uh, no foreground, some items that are blue and some items that are red. Those that have no foreground, let's, like this wood gear here, are things that have been researched already. The green one can be, uh, are those that can be researched directly and the red one are those that cannot be researched directly. Uh, let's actually click on uh, the redstone engine here which I can research so if I click on it I can see that on the left hand side uh, there are some technologies that are required to research this thing which is the uh, wood gear technology or tier 1 technology that's fine this is the technology that is being provided by default so uh, obviously I have it and I can see that if I research this object this will give me access to researching the starting engine as well as the auto workbench. I can click on those things, for example if I click on the auto workbench I can see that I cannot research the auto workbench for now because I need to research uh, the redstone engine as well as the wooden transport pipe before. Alright, let's get back to uh, the redstone engine and here I decide that I do want to research this thing. So I hit start here which initializes the interface on the right and uh, here I need five wooden gears to make this research so if I go back to the regular interface I take my wood gears and I'm going to place them here I'm initiating the research process okay so and this will uh, run the research for uh, this engine eventually it's going to be found and it's going to unlock additional technologies 
the idea is that here you will have uh, buildcraft object, buildcraft items, buildcraft triggers and actions, um, robots, and, and pretty much everything. And here we can can tell that it's done. It's been researched. I can click on it, and actually for auto workbench I will need to research this pipe as well. So let's uh, get started. Um, and you can see here that, as I said, things are organized by tier. So I've got tier one, tier two, tier three, etc. And to enter a new tier, I need to um, research it specifically. So to research stone, uh, stone gear tier, I need 50 wooden gear. Yeah, to, to move from one tier to another, there's a, a little bit more cost than just to um, research a given object. And as I'm going to go higher, in um, in the tiers, I'm going to need more and more objects to run the research. So uh, that's something I'm working on right now. I need feedback on this. Uh, please let me know if this is a gameplay direction that you like. If this is a, a gameplay direction that you don't like, uh, knowing that it is going to be optional, there is going to be an option to deactivate that in survival. It will not be needed in creative, but anyway. Uh, I, I'd, I'd really like to know um, if that's something that uh, you'd be enjoying playing with. Anyway, this is about what I had to say for this weekly Billcroft 6.1 update. Thanks a lot for having watched this video and bye-bye.